Hello, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb here with AccuVision Acupuncture. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes, celebrate the iris. Awful joke, sorry. Um, just have to deal with it. <laughs> anyway, today we're talking about 10 ways to boost your glutathione levels, okay? Uh, if you guys watched uh, an earlier post I made, glutathione is arguably the most important antioxidant. Now, a lot of the time... We talk about antioxidants when we talk about eye and retinal and optic nerve issues. We talk about carotenoid antioxidants. And carotenoid ant antioxidants, as we know, protect the retina and macula and optic nerve and brain against UV radiation and blue light. It's a very, very important antioxidant, carotenoid antioxidants. And again, those are found in things like vitamin A, uh, lutein, zeaxanthin, retinal palmitate, leaf leafy green vegetables, there are a lot of high, uh, rich, uh, rich, rich, uh, carotenoid antioxidants foods as well as supplements. So, and that's one form of antioxidants. There's another form of antioxidants that we're talking about here, uh, which is glutathione. Glutathione is arguably the most important systemically for the body to help the body deal with oxidative stress. So I want to talk a little bit about glutathione. Uh, I'm going to give you guys 10 ways to boost your glutathione levels. And if you wanna do some research on glutathione, uh, I don't wanna to spend too much time on that because you guys could obviously do that online, learn more about glutathione and its benefits. Um, it has systemic benefits uh, for your whole body, but of course we're talking specifically here with brain, eye health, the entire visual system. So glutathione, how do we boost these levels? Here are the 10 best ways that I've found to help boost your glutathione levels. A lot of them are through diet. So the first thing we want to do, number one, is increase sulfur-rich foods. Glutathione is sulfur-based. Okay, so sulfur-rich foods uh, primarily are foods that are going to have kind of a sulfury smell to them. Um, garlic, green onions, uh, scallions, these types of foods are... Uh, very, very uh, large amounts of, of, of sulfur in them. So they really help out. Uh, and again, with any of these, you can go and Google sulfur-rich foods and find out more about them and find foods that you enjoy um, that work for you. Some people don't do well with garlic or onions. So you can do some Google and find out sulfur-rich foods and start adding those to your diet. That's the first thing you want to do because these are sulfur-rich foods, which are a help with the manufacturing and the body's endogenous production of glutathione. Second thing we want to do is increase vitamin C, right? Uh, vitamin C is very, very important as a cofactor to help glutathione metabolize and just be bioavailable to the body. So my favorite form of vitamin C is liposomal vitamin C or lipospheric vitamin C. So the vitamin C is actually in a fat where it's taken right to the liver where it can be used a lot better than if you take something like straight vitamin C or ascorbic acid, can be a little tough on the stomach. Those of you guys who've played around with high doses of vitamin C know that you have a bowel tolerance. That means if you take too much, you're going to kind of get the runs. You're going to get watery stools. Uh, sometimes that's um, a desired effect, but often it's just because there's too much ascorbic acid in the digestive tract, uh, rendering the digestive system too acidic, and the body's going to get rid of the fluids um, through, you know, you're basically going to have diarrhea in the runs a little bit. So um, not the best thing. So what I found is liposomal vitamin C, you need much, much less, and it's a lot more bioavailable. So these are little gel packs that they come. You guys could find them online as well. Um, we sell them. You could get them through Amazon. Again, they're called liposomal or lipospheric vitamin C. You can also do things like, uh, you can do uh, injections like IV Therapy, vitamin, th vitamin C therapy is really effective too. And also, again, foods that are rich in vitamin C. Uh, a lot of your uh, grapefruits, um, oranges, citrus, of course, very, very high, uh, high in vitamin C. Kiwis, for sure. So that's number two. Number three, we want to increase selenium-rich foods. All right, selenium is another uh, nutrient that works very, it's actually a mineral that works very, very well with helping the body to produce more glutathione. 
and selenium rich foods. Again, if you want to go to Google this, uh, feel free to do so. But mostly you're looking at foods like beef, chicken, fish, organ meats. So your proteins, all right, your proteins are going to have a lot of selenium in them. So you want to add that to your diet as well. Um, if you are vegan, you could certainly find uh, certain alternative sources for selenium. Uh, again, just, just Google. This stuff's like easy for you guys to do a little research on. Um, so that's number three, uh, uh, selenium rich foods. Number four is we want to actually eat foods that are high in glutathione, right? Um, probably should have put that first, but so there are foods that are rich in glutathione that have this sulfur content as well. Uh, things like spinach, avocado, asparagus, okra, which also have creatinine antioxidants. So you're getting a double whammy, especially with things like uh, spinach and okra. They have creatinine antioxidants, but they also have a lot of glutathione in them. So really, really super foods for the eye and brain health. Okay, so that's number four, eating foods that are rich in glutathione. The next Number five is supplement with whey protein. Guys, there's a lot of research that shows whey pr protein can be very, very helpful in the manufacturing and endogenous production. Again, endogenous meaning your body's producing itself of, of glutathione. So whey protein powders, really, really good. Again, if you're uh, skipping meals or you're working out, uh, whey protein is a really, uh, it's one of my favorite proteins. I'm not really big on soy protein. Uh, a lot of people have problems with egg protein, um, but whey protein, especially whey isolates, seem to be uh, really effective in terms of their bioavailability for the body to rebuild muscle for those who are weight training or doing that type of stuff, uh, but also, again, really help with glutathione production and, and usability in the body and bioavailability, we call that. So that's number five. Number six, consider adding a supplement called milk thistle. Milk thistle... Maybe you guys have heard it. Very, very, very important supplement for liver health, specifically for the phase two detoxification pathways. The liver has two phases of detoxification. The first phase breaks down the garbage. The second phase two kind of bags it and ties it up so it's safe for elimination. So milk thistle really helps with this second phase of, uh, of liver detoxification or uh or getting rid of toxins in the body. It's really, really important. And that's what glutathione does as well. So you're having a synergistic action here when you take glutathione uh, with milk thistle. So I'm a big, uh, if you want to make tea, milk thistle tea, uh, drink that. Um, a lot of these liver detox teas that you can get, like yogi teas or in a health food store or something like that, a lot of them have milk thistle. So adding this, these, these uh, nutrients to help with uh, the phase two detox pathway is really, really effective for uh, making your body's ability to utilize glutathione uh, a lot better. So that's number six, adding milk thistle. Number seven, a lot of you guys have probably heard of turmeric and curcumin, right? The active ingredient in curcumin. Now, a lot of these, these are herbs that have been used for millennia, thousands of years in Asia, uh, in Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, uh, for sure, for a very long time, and they have uh, very uh, strong analgesic, anti-inflammatory, uh, and often blood thinning properties. So they're kind of good for, for inflammation and, and trauma. They kind of thin the blood out a little bit as well. So uh, they also help increase your glutathione levels in your body as well. So turmeric is a really good anti-inflammatory. It's also good for helping improve your glutathione levels in your body. The only thing with turmeric is just it can be kind of difficult for some people to, to digest so um, just you want to have like a, a digestible form extracts. I like extracts best. Uh, sometimes the powders work, but the hard capsules or the, the tablet sometimes uh, they can be a little difficult to digest. So just keep that in mind, guys. So that's number seven to add a turmeric to your, your regimen. Number eight, get enough sleep. All right. When we don't sleep, when we don't get restful, restorative sleep, that really can consume a lot of our glutathione because 
uh, we're not during the sleep process we go through a, a antioxidant process our body releases a lot of cortisol at night our body cools down and relaxes and repairs and regenerates if we're not sleeping at night very well that repair and regeneration and antioxidant activity that happens at night uh, doesn't happen or it's impaired or reduced so it's going to decrease the glutathione activity that's going on in the body and therefore we're not going to have that detoxification and management of oxidative stress so get enough sleep really really important uh, both quantity and quality so and guys just keep in mind to that like taking an Ambien or you know drinking half a bottle of wine that ain't sleep that's passing out so we're really talking about good restorative sleep really really important for your uh, glutathione levels and your detox pathways and your brain and eye health overall um, number nine let's talk about rec regular exercise there's a lot of research that shows that exercising reg regularly is another way to stimulate the body's own endogenous production of glutathione right the body produces its own glutathione when we're exercising it releases its own antioxidants to help move the liver move the bile through the digestive system to get rid of all the metabolic waste products that have loaded up in the body which is really what glutathione does it helps uh, just attach to the waste the garbage the free radical activity and just brings it out of the body uh, through the stool so really really important there uh, keep the exercise regularly to keep the lymphatics I can't overemphasize the the uh, seemingly infinite infinite benefits of of, uh, of exercise and you guys should know that <laughs> Um, both so exercise let's talk about that for a minute so when we talk about exercise we're talking about not only cardiovascular which is of course uh, aerobic exercise walking um, treadmill elliptical uh, running anything like that uh, but we're also talking about resistance training right uh, weights or bands or, or body weight training also flexibility and mobility training that means keeping your body flexible and mobile that's important as well um, so that's that's uh, exercise and finally the number 10 spot here is avoiding alcohol right I would also say caffeine I would add to this list as well alcohol is one of the biggest uh, substances that will break down very very stressful on the liver it will break down glutathione so the body doesn't have it so if you're drinking alcohol it's more the reason to increase things like milk thistle curcumin turmeric um, to to supplement the fact that you are going to impair this process of, of breaking down uh, uh, antioxidant or, or oxidants or free radicals in the body so alcohol is very oxidizing to the body extremely oxidizing so we want to avoid alcohol a lot of stimulants in general uh, things like smoking as well I'm going to add to this list of alcohol smoking alcohol uh, excessive use of, of coffee and stimulants uh, energy drinks stuff like that um, will definitely have an impact even a lot of medications so if you're on a lot of medications uh, certain pharmaceutical medications will absolutely that are particularly stressful on the liver again because when we talk about glutathione and free radical activity and antioxidant activity we're really focusing on liver right it's a liver liver function over here so any of these these uh, nutrients or, or chemicals that are in the environment that are going to stress out our bodies also women who are using birth control right that's that's another little bonus that I wanted to mention here if you're using birth control uh, that's going to put stress on your liver and that's going to cause um, you know so, some impaired glutathione levels and or manufacturing so that's a couple little extra things there now there are a couple of supplements that I want to mention that we can take that will also help boost our glutathione and the first thing might come to mind why can't I just take glutathione supplement well you can uh, until recently so when I first started studying uh, naturopathic and functional medicine uh, it was it was it was understood that you can't take glutathione uh, is a supplement by itself and here's why when you take an oral supplement of glutathione it just like it's gone in a flash due to the hydrochloric acid in the stomach it just does not the body will not break it down or absorb it it gets totally lost in the digestive system with your gastric juices so uh, I'm gonna guess about 
six or seven years ago, they came out with this new technology. Uh, if you're paying attention, we mentioned to about it earlier with vitamin C. So it is a way of taking these nutrients and encapsulating them in a fat. So what we have is something called liposomal glutathione, where it's taken and encased in a fat, all right? So we have this liposomal glutathione, which is a great way to take glutathione. Do not take regular glutathione. You're just wasting your money. It has to be, if you're going to take glutathione orally, it has to be a uh, liposomal glutathione, okay? That will produce glutathione. The second thing, uh, or second way rather, to get uh, glutathione into your body and get your body to manufacture glutathione is to take precursors. This That means that there are certain specific nutrients that uh, when combined in a recipe, so to speak, will be put together to help create and manufacture more uh, um, glutathione. The main nutrient for that is an amino acid called N-acetylcarnosine. Now there, keep in mind, there's N-acetylcarnosine, which is what we're talking about. There's N-acetylcarnitine and there's N-acetylcysteine. We're not talking about the second two. Very, very specific here about N-acetylcarnosine, NAC, okay? This is what those of you guys who are using the NAC drops uh, for cataracts, for example, um, uh, NAC is very, very important for helping boost the, the uh, glutathione levels. And we use eye drops called can C eye drops that are very high in this N acetylcarnosine that help uh, slow and prevent, even in some cases, reverse cataracts. It's amazing. So that will be a dead giveaway for you guys that uh, one of the big factors when it comes to vision. Uh, where we see problems when glutathione levels decrease is early cataracts or accelerated cataracts all the time. When we have low glutathione levels, the body is going to accelerate with cataracts. And again, this relationship, I don't want to get too much into this, but there's this relationship in Chinese medicine between liver health and eye health. And the big link or the big modern translation between that is oxidative stress. So again, the liver manages oxidative stress. Of course, there's things like glucagon and blood sugar and detox pathways. But one aspect that we're talking about here with liver health as it relates to your vision is this oxidation level. And then specifically, we're talking about using the NAC and acetylcarnosine to help your eyes, manu help your body manufacture more glutathione and specifically to help with your the lens of your eyes to prevent, prevent against cataracts. So... We have the NAC, we have the liposomal glutathione, we also have transdermal glutathione, which is not as available as it, because I think they tried it, it was okay, but now that they have the liposomal and the NAC, it's much better. We're using transdermal like lotions or creams that absorb through your skin. And finally, there is uh, IV glutathione. So those of you guys who've had IV therapy, maybe uh, like a Myers cocktail or IV vitamin C or IV drips for vitamin therapy. Um, a lot of times they'll come in and they'll take a syringe and do uh, an IV push of glutathione. Now you can get that by itself or part of an IV nutrient program. Um, there's actually a lot of research on IV glutathione for things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and ALS, uh, dementia, a lot of these brain issues. And, oh, I wanted to mention with the NAC, there was some research going on with the Foundation Fighting Blindness who were trying to uh, supplement uh, patients with a lot of NAC, again, to try to boost the glutathione levels. Now, I don't, it's not, not going to hurt. It's good for the overall body. I don't, don't think it's necessarily going to help uh, specifically RP um, creatinoid antioxidants do a better job at that, but for sure, uh, for long-term health and preventing against cataracts, it'll, it'll be really useful for that. So that's what I got today, guys, on glutathione. There you have the 10 uh, main ways to help boost your glutathione levels. I'm Dr. Andy Rosenfarb. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. If you have any topics, anything else you're interested in hearing about, reach out to me. We're doing a lot of uh, patient education these days, if you guys are aware. So reach out, let us know uh, how you're doing and if you have any questions. Again, Dr. Andy Rosenberg here with AccuVision Acupuncture, and your vision is our mission. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care.